Welcome to my kitchen and today I'd like to welcome Abby Southward. Uh, she's my neighbor yes. and I, I watched her grow up but anyway yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. she's going to show us some uh, cuts and she went to school and I'm gonna let her just take over and okay. talk to you from here. Great. Okay? Great. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Um, like Chris said, my name's Abby, and I went to the Pennsylvania Culinary Institute in downtown Pittsburgh. Um, the program is um, like a condensed program. I went for 16 months, and you get a two-year degree out of that. So it was nonstop, like no breaks or anything like that. And um, I uh, went for the culinary arts. You can do culinary arts or pastry. And um, I'm going to do some of my cuts today. This is my knife kit. This is like your best fr best friend. <laughs> um, you carry with you. You can um, have all your knives in here. This is my chef's knife. Um, you do. I use this for everything. I don't really use a paring knife or whatnot. But um, I have a serrated knife in here, and you can do um, use this for breads or even carving meat. I have before. But it's a bread knife, um, a paring knife, let's see, I have a couple different boning knives. This is a flexible boning knife, you can see how it bends easily, and then this one is a hard boning knife, it doesn't flex. Um, the difference in these, um, the flexible one is for fish, so you can get in there with the bones and then the hard, um, Non-flexible one is for meats. So that's the difference in that. Um, I have um, a pair of pliers, and this is for salmon, pulling the pin bones out of salmon. Um, very useful. And let's see. Here's another um, knife. This is for um, this is a tournée knife, and um, let's see. I might have a picture here don't. Um, if you can see that little object right there, that is what this knife is for. Um, you peel it and you make it into eight shape, eight, an eight-sided figure. That's what that's for. I think that's about all the neat things I have in here. This is called um, a utility knife. It's just a long knife that um, you can do carving with. I, don't, I have my carving knife at home. So we did a lamb roast last night. Um, this is a fish spatula. Um, it's very handy. I use it all the time. It's good for delicate fish. So, so what do you do with the fish spatula? Just you, lift? Yeah, you just lift it. You use it for turning fish, breaded okay. fish, baked fish. Um, it's just real delicate. Uh -huh. I think that's about it. So I'm going to show you my the basic um, cuts. And I have this template here that you can see. Um, we were tested in school. I had a whole, um, it was six weeks long of learning the basics. And it's nice, it has all your um, temperatures, measurements, um, even a recipe for pie dough right there, pastry dough. Um, but I was tested for six weeks on our cuts. And as you can see here, the julienne, which is a very basic, it's a six, 16th by 16th by 16th, and um, then the brunsois, that's um, cutting it into a square, just cutting it smaller. Fine dice is a quarter cut, and um, then a small dice is, uh, or I'm sorry, a batonne is the stick figure of it, which is a quarter, and then the small dice is cutting it even smaller. So I'll do those cuts for you. Um, the basics, what we were always tested on was dicing an onion, um, doing carrots, and then a potato. So I'll start with the onion and we'll get the crying out of the way. <laughs> um, how you hold a knife is you kind of want to be able to balance it on your finger like that. You want to find like the medium point of your knife and you hold your pointer finger on the right side of it and then you just hold it like a regular knife. This 
is a huge no-no to put your pointer finger on top of a knife. Um, it looks unprofessional and it's also dangerous. So I'm sticking my pointer finger on the right side of the knife as you look at it and my thumb on the left side. We're going to go ahead and steal my knife. Um, this is not a sharpening tool, but you use it for taking the rough edges off of a knife. And you hold this at a 16 degree angle when you do it. And you just want to run your, I can tell by hearing it that I'm running it the right direction. It's just nice and smooth. You just want to run it a few times and uh, make sure your knife is nice and sharpened. So we'll start with this onion. And you always want to um, put your fingers down, like your fingernails, and run your knife against the first joint, like the first knuckle of your finger. And um, you never want to take the tip of your knife off the board. That is a safety feature of the cut. So you have your fingers um, down on your product, and then you just hold your knife against the first knuckle here. We'll start, you always cut the end pieces off the onion, the top, then the bottom. You um, want to cut it close to the bottom, to the stem, I guess it would be called, so you keep your base on there so when you start cutting, um, it doesn't fall all apart. And the proper way to cut an onion, um, if you want to do a small dice, is cut right through the center of it from core to the other end that we cut off already. I'm just going to slice right down through that. And then I'm taking the peeling, the outside of it off, because that's the unedible part. You don't want that. That's um, good for stocks, the outside of it, so save it if you're going to make a stock or a broth or something that has a lot of flavor in it. And then I'm peeling the other side. So once we have that off, we're going to find the root end of it that I said you don't want to cut all the way. And keep that as your base so the onion doesn't fall apart. And just to do a fine dice to an onion, you gotta hold it like I showed you with your fingernails down on the onion. And then once you have your proper hold on your knife, you just take small little swipes in your onion, and you want to do this at a degree, um, an angle, I guess, so um, it's easier to cut all the way around your onion. And you just go almost all the way through. I have like a quarter inch I'm not cutting into. It just keeps it together better. And you just want to let your knife do the work for you. That's why it's important to have a nice sharp knife. The sharper your knife is, um, the less prone you are to cut yourself. So when you have a dull knife, you're really um, struggling to cut something. That's when you have accidents. So you always want to make sure your knife is very sharp. But I'm just finishing up the cuts over here and I'm moving my hand around so I stay out of the way of the blade. So once I cut through it, like so, I'm going to take my hand and place it on the top and make, oh, about halfway through, take the knife, I'm going to be over, take the knife and just run it through, make sure your hand is nice and flat, you just want to hold your onion together, through the onion. So that cuts it um, smaller once we go like this. And so now you have nice small little pieces. Always just keep an eye on where your fingers are located. Mm -hmm. It's very important. So this is perfect for soups or toppings on a hot dog or anything like that. That's when you want to make a cut like this. So I cut all my onions small. It hides them in the food for my husband to eat. <laughs> <laughs>
And then once you get to the end of the onion, you just take it, because you don't want to waste, and uh, just cut it up. And then the rest of this is basically waste. So, like I said, you can use that in your soups or stocks. So this is how you cut a small dice of an onion. Okay. okay, we are going to cut a potato next. So first thing you need to um, peel your potato. And I'm sure you've all used a potato peeler. So this is also another <clears throat> item tool that you have to be careful with your fingers. This will cut your finger. So just always use it. Um, away from yourself and just like that so it helps to wash your potato beforehand <clears throat> so you get most of the dirt off of there because potatoes do grow in the ground they're a dirty vegetable so after you get your potato peeled your scraps <laughs> off of here um, it will look like this and I had this potato sitting in a bowl of just cold water because the potatoes will turn brown if you don't keep those in some water. So just um, moisten your potato, dry your potato a little. Thank you. <clears throat> so like I showed you before, you um, hold your knife the same way with one finger on one side and balance your knife and your thumb on the left side. And if you're left-handed, it's just opposite thumb on the right, your pointer finger folded on the left side. Um, we're going to do, we can do a julienne cut, which is what I showed you. It's the um, 16th cut, so it's a very small, it's this long one here, so we will attempt that. Um, when you first start to cut a potato, you want to get a flat edge on it. So squared up is what it's called. Um, you can cut the outside off. And once you have a flat edge, you always turn it so it sits on the flat so it doesn't rock back and forth. Helps to prevent cuts. So we're going to cut the other side off. And you want to use your safety guards of your fingers. And like I'm doing, I have my knife you want to cut in a straight direction down. And that helps to get a flat edge on there. I'm also going to cut the ends off just so it's nice and squared up. Now, I know this is a lot of waste, but this is how you get your perfect cuts out of the potato. So we'll cube those up for soup then. <clears throat> um, so like I said, you just rest your knife on the um, first knuckle of your fingers and you just want to cut directly down. So you always slide your knife forward when you make a cut that direction and um, you just, like I said before, you want to let your knife do all the work. So we're just going to cut down in a forward motion and that is what it should look like for your first cut. Um, let's see. It's, I don't know if you can see that on there. I'll keep cutting. <clears throat> but I always um, like to get all one direction cut first. So I'm going to cut a couple more of these pieces of the 16th of an inch. What would you use this for? This this cut this for. cut um you would use for like a nice um, soup like a broth if you want just garnished with vegetables in it um, you would use this for garnish of an item um, like with the pepper or um, mostly just garnishes of soup or even a salad something like that so now that we have the first cut and it's nice and flat we're going to stack all these potatoes up and cut the same measurement, like the same dimension, down on this side of it. And the important thing to remember 
it doesn't matter if you get it, you know, the 16th, I'm picking out my best one here, the 16th of an inch, just as long as you cut it all the same direction so you have a nice, um, like a square shape of it. So this is a pretty good one. And um, like I said before, we did six weeks of cutting, you know, vegetables, so you got your perfect one, and we always had to pick out like our top four cuts that were the best of it. And I'm going to try to get some more good ones here. But like I said, it's really the first cut that um, is the most important because if you get that off, then your whole stick is going to be off. So. I was telling him how, how you practiced. Your mom said you had to buy bags of potatoes. Yep. <laughs> Because that's what you get tested on in culinary school is, um, you know, your your cuts. So I uh, had lots of soup in school. <laughs> we ate lots of soup. Um, bags of onions, potatoes, and um, these are the little sticks. And so this is the end pieces. They're not as good. But then we just take and find these sticks sticks up. So this is the julienne cut. That is what you're looking for in there. Lays in that, sure, it lays in there. Oh, pattern thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> let's see. I thought I had a better one. This is, this is a really good one. Nice and square. So now we're going to take and matches up with that second one. Um, cut these down again. And you want the same dimension. So sixteenth of an inch. Like I said before, you, you want to try to leave the tip of your knife on your board. Just like that. So, now you get these pretty little squares. And, um, let's see. This is a good one. Right there we are. <laughs> so, that's a good one. And you can see I set it next to what it's supposed to look like, so it's pretty close there in the size. All right, so now we have the julienne cut done. We'll do the batonne. The batonne is just a little bit bigger. Um, it's actually an eighth of an inch. So we just want to move our knife. important to remember to keep your knife cut straight directly down. Move your knife forward as you cut. Okay. Then that's uh, an uneven piece we don't want to use. Just do the same. <clears throat> Repeat everything. You just cut it a little bit bigger. So. You'll see this cut more um, in restaurants because it, it is a little bigger. This is the size of one. It's just about double the size. And then 
you want it in a smaller cut, you just do the same thing and make it into little cubes. Make sure and use your, you keep your thumb back out of the way and you use your um, guide hand to do all the work. How many times did you cut yourself? Um, <clears throat> surprising, I never really did. I mean, I've had like little nicks here and there, mm -hmm. but nothing to go to the hospital over. <laughs> so if you don't go to the hospital, it's not really a cut in my book. <laughs> but. I saw lots of people, though, on the other hand, in my classes, go to the hospital. <laughs> yes, that's for sure. So, here's a, a good size. And that one would fit right in the, in the mold there. Great. So that is the two basic um, cuts. And these are all French terms, obviously, that I'm saying the Julien, the Batnay, the Brunsois, um, because I studied the school I went to was Le Cordon Bleu. So it was a French, a classic French school. So that's that. Um, we can do a carrot. That was the other um, vegetable that we cut a lot. And you just want to square it up, basically. These are some thinner carrot, so I'll see what I can get out of it. And I just went ahead and peeled it like I did with the potato. You just want to make sure and go away from yourself so you don't cut it yourself. But um, just square it up. Watch your fingers and cut straight directly down. Keep turning it on the flat side, which really helps. This is the julienne cut on a carrot. And then you just do the same thing. This would be good for chicken soup or anything like that. So that's the carrot. And of course, um, we don't waste any of this. You can use to cut up into like a, a small dice. That's the next. This is a large dice. Um, it's three quarters of an inch. Um, it's just not as pretty looking as the nice and trimmed up pieces. But we'd of course use it, so that's just cutting up your scraps there. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to cut up a bell pepper. Um, I've seen lots of ways of cutting peppers, but the easiest way is um, just to hold your pepper and cut down and keep all the seeds and the um, white membrane off. So you just keep cutting down. on your pepper and then um, I always like to save the ends of it because that's a good piece so and then if you have some extra but you should usually be able to cut it close enough that all the um, scraps stay together so um, it depends how close what you're doing with your pepper what you want but the white part in it is is bitter so you don't want to eat that so I usually just run my knife along it to take off all the bitter part and you can do it with all the pieces. It's easier to cut it flat to make it into nice strips if you have it all trimmed up. 